Smith's note summary of the seven-day startup by Dan Norris. You don't learn until you launch. This is going to be just a real quick chapter-by-chapter summary. If you're a member of Kindle Unlimited through Amazon, you can get this book for free, and it's only like two or three bucks if you want to buy it for your Kindle anyway. The first chapter of the seven-day startup talks about Dan's first business, his first business idea, his first startup, and the seven-day success he had with WP Curve. If you're not familiar with WP Curve, it provides unlimited WordPress fixes for your website. So if you're using WordPress and you're having some issues, you might want to get with Dan over at WP Curve and see if he can help you out. I think it's it's less than $100 a month, I believe, for unlimited small fixes to your WordPress site. In Chapter 2, Dan answers a question, what is a startup? There's a ton of quotes throughout the book by Eric Ries, who is the author of The Lean Startup, which leads me to believe that Eric had a huge influence on the way that Dan does things. In the book, Dan compares a startup versus a business like this. A startup is a human institution designed to deliver a new product or service under extreme conditions of uncertainty. It has high impact potential, high levels of innovation, and high levels of uncertainty. If there is no innovation, it is not a startup. Versus a business which is anything that derives a wage for its founders. Chapter 3. This is where it starts getting good. Idea, execution, and hustle. Things may come to those who wait, but only things left by hustlers. The goal of this book is to take you from a wannapreneur to an entrepreneur and get something to market quickly. The book breaks the startup down into three parts. Idea, execution, and hustle. Some people say ideas don't matter, but they do. Ideas do matter. You can't sell meat to a vegan. There's not a business plan in the world that will work for this. Execution is getting to market and see if people are willing to pay you for your idea. Hustle is the final element, and you can't get lucky in the hustle department. This is the real work. This is Seth Godin sending his manuscript for his book 900 times and getting rejected. Hustle in the early stages is really what you have to do because you don't have money, but you've got the time and energy, and that's what you have to use to get your customers. When you get people paying you for your service, then you can look at some of the things that will cost you some money. I did a summary on the book Traction by Gabriel Weinberg, which will give you 19 channels, some of them paid, some of them free, that will start giving you a little bit of traction so that you can get some of those customers. Getting out of your comfort zone and going after those people and asking for money is probably not going to come natural to you, but it's something you have to do if you want to succeed in business. Chapter 4, Why 7 Days Matters. There are lots and lots of charts and graphs and checklists in this book. That's one of the reasons I would recommend getting it when you get the chance. Mark Zuckerberg is famous for telling his people to move fast and break things, and that's the same principle that Dan is talking about here. You can get real data from your business in seven days. People might be telling you it's a good idea, but that's probably not true. People don't know what they want until you show them, and then they're forced to open their wallets. Dan also says that pre-selling doesn't work. Many people will argue that product, luck, timing, ability to sell, building a team, and influence will determine whether or not a company will survive. There's actually a TED Talk about this by Bill Gross. It's titled, The Single Reason Startups Succeed. Bill says the single reason startups succeed is because of timing. Peter Thiel says in his book, Zero to One, startups are a one-off event. You can't go back to 2000 and duplicate Facebook a thousand times and see if it would work in every world situation. Another reason for the seven days, you work more efficiently when you're close to a deadline. We all know this, when you're ready to go on vacation, You can get a whole lot more done the day before you go on vacation than you have the previous two weeks. So when you're getting ready for your seven-day startup, you want to start with a clear end date to drive you forward. The seven-day startup mindset is to launch a business in seven days so you don't waste time building something that you don't know if people want. The counter side of this is that you have low expectations of what you're going to get in a week. Chapter 5 starts each of the days. So in day 1, it is a review of the nine elements that a great bootstrap business has. 
and that's enjoyable daily tasks for the founder, the product founder fit, a scalable operation without the founder, an asset the founder can sell, large market potential, pain or pleasure point, unique lead generation advantage, you can launch quickly, pivot fast, and you don't pick low-hanging fruit. Entrepreneurship is about creating a product or service that people want and selling it to them. The easiest thing to do is find a way to solve the problems they're already paying for. And that is day one. It's brainstorming ideas and evaluating them. And day two is your MVP. This comes from the Lean Startup. This is your minimum viable product. Do the smallest amount of work required to test the idea. Write down what you will launch on day one and come up with a plan. Day three, you get your business name. It is important, but not worth spending more than a day on. Honestly, I say it's not worth more than spending a couple of hours on. If you spend more time than that, then you're just allowing it to distract you from building important things. The odds are your business is going to change significantly, and so will your business name. It will have to adapt to suit your new business. So day three is about picking a name. Come up with 10 ideas. Choose a name and see if it's taken. If the dot-com is taken and the social is taken, move on to something else. Some of the basic rules, don't misspell words and don't use words that are hard to spell. Make sure it is something that is easy to spell and easy to say out loud. Word of mouth is one of the best marketing tools. Also, make sure that you like it. Once again, if you get the book, there's a checklist in there that talks about this. Day four is building a website. This is pretty simple and straightforward. Just use WordPress or Squarespace. Put up a landing page that says what you're going to be doing in the near future and go with it. Day five is your ways to market. This is where my previous summary of traction comes into play. You want to create some content. You want to have an email list going. You might have a podcast. You want to be going into forums and online groups telling people what's going on. You might want to look into some guest blogging. Maybe some webinars, some presenting, a little bit of free work, some media coverage in your local area, depending on what you're doing. A whole list of things you can do. Day six, setting up goals and targets. What gets measured gets counted. You'll need a good checklist to show where you are and where you need to go. Day seven is launch. On launch day, you want as many options as possible for people to contact you. Possibly your phone number, your email, a pre-launch list. You want to be on Twitter and Facebook and Meerkat and whatever other social groups you're going to be doing. Day eight is where the work really starts. This is where you're going to start growing your business. This is back to the constant hustle and where you start to refine your business model to get customers. The final summary of this is pretty simple. It's test every assumption, launch quickly, and get real data. That way you know whether or not your business is actually going to succeed in the marketplace. A few other things you want to consider are to solve problems as they arise. This is just in time learning as it's referred to. If you're thinking maybe in six months you're going to make videos for YouTube, you don't need to worry about how to make them right now. Do what you say you're going to do. Under promise and over deliver is how some entrepreneurs refer to it these days. Don't stop learning. You need to outlearn your competitors because those that learn first win. Consider how the business looks without you. Find momentum and manage motivation. You have to get out of the employee mindset and realize it's not Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 anymore. And most importantly, for the seven-day startup or any other startup or business, you have to love what you do. I hope you've enjoyed this summary. You can get more over at smithsnotes.com. Get a free book at smithsbook.com, and I'll talk to you later.